Hello and welcome to Dish Sheld with Adam White. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about yet another Dungeons and Dragons book. Uh, this time it's called Brimstone Angels by Aaron M. Evans. As you can see, it's missing some of its cover here. I'm actually not even sure how that happened. Uh, I had it stored away for a long time, but I don't know if it got wet and I had to tear it off or what, but I like to keep my books pristine, so I was pretty upset that it was torn up like that, but thankfully it was just the cover, so none of the actual novel was damaged, so I was able to read it still. I've had it since it came out in 2011. Now, this takes place around the fourth edition of Dungeons & Dragons, and uh, it uh, took place in their uh, Forgotten Realms, around the city of Neverwinter. It tells the story of twin tiefling girls, and tieflings are like mostly human, but they have horns and tails because they have some demonic uh, ancestry of some kind. Uh, and it's about twin girls named Faraday and Havilar, and they are abandoned at birth, probably because they were born tieflings, and they are found by a dragonborn named Mahin. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Uh, and it's partly about found family, because Mahin is a dragonborn who's been cast out of his clan, and he finds these abandoned infants and goes to, a, I can't remember the name of the town, but it's a town of outcasts, basically. And he couldn't find anyone there that would take them on as their own children, so he ended up raising them himself. So uh, as the book start, as the book goes, they're 17 years old, so he's had them for almost 17 years. And he's raised them and trained them with weapons and uh, stuff like that. But they they are definitely the very definition of a, fa of a found family in here. And one night, Havilar calls forth a Cambion, which is like a half-devil, and is doing it basically just because she could and was bored. And she ends up leaving, and her sister Faraday uh, ends up talking to the Cambion and forms a pact with him so she can gain magical powers and become a warlock. And then bad things happen. They get cast out of the town, so the outcast family in a town of outcasts becomes an outcast even from them. And, uh, so it, it's, it's, the rest of the book constantly deals with that feeling of being not wanted. And, um, there's that and um again. They come across a caravan that's being attacked by orcs and they help save it and meet up with a priest and uh, a young man who has a very mysterious history behind him, and they don't know much about him, but they end up kind of taking him on as part of their little family and move forward with that. Now, it's also about being... You know, the, the found family aspect is there, but the the fact that they're all outcasts really goes through the whole, the whole of the book. And another theme is that of being controlled by someone. Because in order for her to have those warlock powers, she's, uh, Faraday is basically enslaved to this cambion and no matter what she does she's 
kind of under his purview. And that comes into play throughout the whole rest of the book, too. And the status changes a little bit here and there, but um, Mahin becomes enthralled by a succubus, and that changes him a lot. Uh, I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying that. It's not really a shock. There's a, a one of the main villains is a succubus named Rohini, and uh, she causes all sorts of trouble uh, throughout the book. And um, you also have the Cambian's mother, which is a, an arch devil named Invadia, and all of her, um, I think they're called Aranese. Uh, that are basically all these female devils, and uh, they cause trouble, and everybody's double-crossing everybody else, and <laughs> it's just a, a big, um, a big to-do, uh, and they all end up in Neverwinter, which is a city that's been mostly destroyed and their people are trying to build it back up and so the book is it has that sense of you know belonging to somebody else not in a healthy way either uh so that's a theme throughout it as well and you get to see the growth of these two tiefling twins basically becoming adults from getting out of childhood and becoming adults through the battles that they face uh, and how they end up, you know, what they have to sacrifice for each other. And, um, sorry. And, um, uh, <laughs> It just, it's its a really good novel. Uh, I don't want to say much more about the plot because I don't want to give anything away. Because like I said, there are, there are schemes within schemes. So if you like that sort of thing and kind of intrigue and, uh, you know, stuff like that, then you'll like that. Erin M. Evans is an excellent author. Uh, she wrote... Uh, there's five books in this series and a, a book that's part of another series that features these characters. Uh, so six books total she wrote uh, about these characters. And I'm looking forward to uh, reading the rest of them. Uh, I have two of them in paperback copies that are in better shape than this. They managed to survive. And uh, uh, the rest I'll just get on Kindle. That's much simpler. Uh, but because they are all available on Kindle. I tell you, that's the one thing about the Dungeons & Dragons books is they've made most of their back catalog, Wizards of the Coast has, they've made most of their catalog available on Kindle because most of them just were first printings and never were reprinted. And they... Uh, it's hard to come by to get them, you know, even, you know, a decade ago. You couldn't come across unless you just found them in used bookstores or something. And they've done a really good job of getting all their stuff onto Kindle so it's easily accessed now. And so I, I do think that that's a, a good thing because a lot of these books... For Dungeons and Dragons are are really good. Uh, the the first the Dragonlance series that I talked about two weeks ago uh, was part of like the second edition around there. Uh, the last week's featured third edition, and then this is fourth edition. And then they aren't doing so much now. Once they hit fifth edition, uh, they haven't really done a lot of if any, novels, uh, which I find kind of strange. 
Uh, R.A. Salvatore always does more Driss Duarte novels, but he, he's been doing those for at least 30 years or more. And of course, they're all excellent, but there's a ton of them. Um, anyway, really good book. Erin uh, M. Evans has moved on to start her own series. The first one is called Empire of Exiles. It's the book of the the Usurper, book one. Uh, it is out. I've got it on Kindle. I just haven't read it yet. I knew these. she wrote these first, so I was going to read these before I read uh, that. But I'm looking, really f looking forward to reading that. And uh, the second book in that series comes out next year. So I, I assume it'll be a trilogy just because most fantasy things are trilogies. But uh, we'll see. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book, Brimstone Angels. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's about 350 pages, maybe 340. Uh, so it was a little bit longer than the other ones. Well, not the Dragon Lance. But uh, anyway, really good novel. I know this has been kind of a rambly one just because I was having trouble thinking of what to talk about for this one uh, for some reason, but it is a really good book and I highly recommend it. And like I said, there's a series. So if you enjoy it, there's more where this came from. Uh, anyway, I really liked it. Aaron M. Evans is a good author. Uh, I'm glad they got good authors to do Dungeons and Dragons books because all the ones I've read so far have been pretty good. So uh, anyway, thank you for hanging out with me this week and I will see you guys next week, probably with a big announcement. So, uh, if you watch me at all, you might want to tune in for next week's, but, uh, I will talk to you then and we'll just see what falls out next week. Thanks for hanging out with me.